what I'm doing today is I'm outside. I thought about coming out here to paint, but it's a little bit hot. I mean, it's not terrible. I could do it, but really what I want to do is practice some negative painting. And I've had a lot of you request negative painting, some more examples. And I just wanted to do some practice ones in my sketchbook. And a great subject for negative painting is leaves. Negative painting works best with light subjects over dark backgrounds. So I'm just gonna look around and find some leaves that I can take some pictures in, take back into my studio and practice in my sketchbook. These are nice dogwood leaves. I'm probably just gonna take some like small sections of this to practice. Leaves are pretty forgiving to draw. So it's a good way to practice negative painting. And I think negative painting, as I said, it not only works best with leaves, but florals, anything that's like over a dark background where you have uh, a repeated subject. This is a little bit of a hickory tree, but it's nice contrast right there against that dark background. You know, you can use, you can rearrange these leaves any way you want in your drawing, which is what I usually do. I also found these uh, maple leaves, which I think will make a good subject. I think I'll do that for my second study, which I'll be sharing that on Patreon. I'm going to be using this Kilimanjaro notebook today. This is 140 pound, 100% cotton, Gold pressed watercolor paper is just a fantastic paper, and I'm excited to get back into using it again. I've already got my two studies taped off, so uh, I'll be primarily sharing the top one here, and the bottom one I'll be sharing on Patreon. These are the dogwood tree leaves. They're going to make a great subject, I think. A lot of neat contrast and leaves to uh, use. Some other choices here. I'll probably save those for possible paintings in the future studies especially like these and I'm gonna do my second study with those maple leaves so I'm just drawing in here very very lightly uh, you'll see in a bit that I'm gonna darken everything down because I'm afraid the washes will make the pencil less visible but I pretty much managed this composition uh, to my liking Rarely can you take a photograph and just position everything the way it is in the photograph. So just trying to do a pleasing eye leading composition. Here you can see where I've darkened everything in the pencil. That's a Sterling Edwards glazing and blending brush. We're going to get started wetting down this whole paper. It usually takes a couple coats at least, sometimes three. And I just, I don't press hard, but I do work that uh water all over the paper so that it's saturated because all of this initial tones will be wet and wet. So the thing to keep in mind when you do these is the initial washes are your foreground element colors but you're carrying them right on into the background and you want these initial washes to be your lightest value. Always keep that in mind. Very important. Otherwise you'll make them too dark. And the fun of doing negative painting is making these initial washes uh, variegated to a degree. Now I'm making these more yellow, green, and yellow than was actually true in the reference. But I thought the reference was drab, a little lifeless. So depending on the light, they could be like this. You can see uh, I'm keeping the values light, but in the background, as the water starts to move less, I can start to hint some of those background colors and everything dries lighter anyway so you can see how the first washes I put down have gotten so much lighter already it's not even finished drying yet and this is the second study which I will not be going into depth here You're just seeing a little of me doing the background so patrons look for that on patreon as a sketchbook peaks video now the pencil was hard to see so I'm using a colored pencil here to darken it down because as I add more washes that pencil will just disappear. So I want to be able to see it. It's very important with negative painting. Now it's time to start finding the edges. 
this is the fun part of negative painting. It's just really, really fun. And the painting will just start to come to life. And I take it in small chunks. So, you know, you'll see me paint a piece like this and maybe blend it out into the background with water. There are a couple ways you can go. You can start these um, with very dark color, like your darkest colors. And I've done that to a degree in others. I prefer, though, to do these lighter glazes and just work the value down gradually because I can always go back over these. This just helps me see where my leaves are and how my um, composition is progressing. And you can see now I've just added more light negative painting. And I'm painting around everything. I'm not using any mask. I'm painting around the stems, all the leaves, even those little berries. Establishing where the edges are. That first pass is pretty much all about that. Those values will have to come down further. Negative painting is so valuable. It's a different way of seeing and it helps you practice that way of seeing. And you can't approach everything negative painting in a, in a negative painting format. But um, where there's a light subject over a dark background, you certainly can. Now here I'm starting to tone some of the detail and color in the leaves because I want to see where that leaves me with my background. I need to know where some of these leaves are going to end up in value so I'll know how dark to go with my background. So there's not going to be a lot of detail in this leaf texture, just suggestions since it's a study. But these uh, few here will help me uh, understand how dark everything has to come down. And so now I'm just starting to lower the value. I'm lowering the value of this leaf over here again along with part of the background again just as a gauge. And I can tell from that how much everything needs to come down. More of the same, just putting in values on some of the leaves so it can get a better gauge. As I do darken the background and add more contrast, um, I start to work more in dabs instead of solid background colors. I just want to give the impression that there's texture and maybe a distant sort of out of focus set of leaves back there. So I'll add it in dabs, maybe blend some of it out as I'm doing here. Alternating between that and working the detail and some of the texture uh, with the leaves. It's, it's really not texture, it's sort of the undulation. Getting value that undulates. One thing about paintings like this you've got to understand is you've got to get your values before you do anything else. You start texturing and detailing these leaves and your values are not right. The whole thing is going to fail. If you get all the values right and a limited amount of texture on your leaves, it's going to look a whole lot better. So texture does not make a painting. Detail does not make a painting. Values make a painting. I cannot overstress that. I just cannot. So in these studies, I won't be overly focused on detail, just suggesting it. So while everything you see now is, while it is a bit of detail, it's more of uh, value adjustments, just a lot of adjustments. I'm adjusting overlap, where one leaf comes over another and casts a shadow maybe. And how does that translate, you know, into a little bit of texture, a little bit of uh, undulation or, or vein detail on the leaves.
a lot of adjustment in this process. But as I was saying before, um, negative painting just helps you see better. It, it helps you see things in a different way. You will find opportunities, while maybe not to do the whole painting, but you'll find opportunities you ne use negative painting in almost every watercolor painting that you do. There will probably be some instance of it. And it's just a way of unifying a subject because your initial washes can carry from the foreground subjects into the background. And it's just a way of thinking in terms of negative and positive values. Now I'm getting very, very selective about where I add little pops of contrast. And I'm keeping it more uh, small stroke. This was kind of my final step um, overall, and that's doing some gentle lifting. I felt that was really necessary to communicate the undulation on these leaves. Just a lot of character in these leaves, which is why I chose the dogwood. Just using clear water, brushing in there, loosening the paint. I have a tissue in my left hand and boom, just dabbing up that paint. And you get some nice subtle lifting. Now I'm back to adjusting some values. I'm actually adding some blue glazes in places. So I have a little more color interest. I'm alternating between that and lifting. Back and forth and back and forth. Adjust, adjust, darken, lift, till I'm satisfied. Really fun though. I should probably mention that my light source is coming sort of from the upper right. It's not a strong light source, but where the leaves sort of fold up on the right side, it's more in shadow. So that's informing a lot of where I add these shadows. And most of that's just based on observation very important for you to do when you're working on these to have a, a light source that you can use to uh, determine where your shadows go and this is the finished piece the only thing I didn't do on tape is I added a little bit of color to those stems and painted in the berries very very simply though thanks everybody for watching Appreciate it. Thanks patrons. Make sure you check out in a few days. I should have posted uh, the second study I did with maple leaves and Thank you everyone else. Please like and subscribe If you're not a subscriber and we will see everybody in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye